Hey guys, Sam here. Matter, it's stuff. You, me, the computer you're using to watch this video, the camera that I'm using to make this video, all made out of matter, which is anything that occupies space and has mass. Now, actually, the entirety of the observable universe is made of matter. To be more specific, it's made out of baryonic matter, and a baryon is just a particle that is made up of any combination of three of the six different types of quarks. Up, down, top, bottom, charm, and strange. It's the kind of matter that we put on our periodic table. But here's the thing. Most of the universe is not made up of baryonic matter. More than 95% of the universe is dark. We can't see it. We can barely interact with it. All that dark stuff out there plays an important role in the shape of our universe. According to the general theory of relativity, the universe can take on one of three basic shapes, open, closed, or flat. If there's more than a certain amount of matter and energy in the universe, then it takes on a closed shape. If there's less than that amount, then it will take on an open shape. But if there's just the right amount of matter and energy in the universe, then that universe will take on a flat shape. As it turns out, when you include all that dark stuff out there, our universe has just the right amount of matter and energy to be flat. Okay, but what is all of this dark stuff? Well, it's actually two different things. Part of it is cold dark matter, or just dark matter, and the rest of it is hot dark matter, or dark energy. Dark energy makes up 71.1% of everything in the universe, and it has a really neat property. That is, it's gravitationally repulsive. It actually pushes things away. That gravitationally repulsive property of dark energy is causing the entire universe to expand. This is called Hubble's Law, that everything in the universe expands away from everything else. Things that are farther away from us are actually moving away from us at a much faster rate than the things that are closer to us. We can demonstrate this by measuring the redshift of light as its sources move away from us at a very high speed. Redshift is kind of like the Doppler effect, when a car moving away from you very fast has a lower pitch than when it was moving towards you. But in the case of redshift, light has a longer wavelength because its source is moving away from us incredibly fast, shifting the color of the light towards the red end of the light spectrum. The opposite effect would be called blue shift. Dark matter accounts for 24% of the universe, and it has scientists a little bit puzzled. They're not quite sure what exactly it is. There are a few possibilities, though. The first being that dark matter could simply be a bunch of brown dwarfs, which are failed stars about 1 20th the size of our sun, and can't be seen because they give off no light. Alternatively, dark matter could just be a bunch of supermassive black holes. But perhaps the most interesting theory is that dark matter could be a new form of matter entirely. Scientists call this type of matter weakly interacting massive particles, or just WIMPs for short, and they're a type of non-baryonic matter. What we do know about dark matter is that it only interacts with baryonic matter very weakly, and we can't see it, most likely because it doesn't actually emit any light at all. We also know that it has mass. We found that galaxies and galaxy clusters tend to have around 10 times more mass than we would expect based on what we can actually see in terms of baryonic matter. This tells us that there's a lot of dark matter out there, much more than baryonic matter. And it also affects the way that our universe looks. But the universe isn't just a large clump of galaxies and gas clouds. If we could zoom out more, we could see that all those galaxies are just small parts of a larger structure throughout the universe. Stars like our sun make up galaxies, which come together to form galaxy groups, which in turn form galaxy clusters and superclusters, and finally, structures called filaments. And in between all those filaments are large expanses with little to no baryonic matter called cosmic voids. If we were able to view our galaxy from an extreme distance, we might see something like this an infinite, flat, and ever-expanding network of galaxies and stars. And in between all those galaxies and stars is dark matter that we've only just begun to study. Thanks for watching.